Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. And today we're going to take a look at the basics of keyframing. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Okay, what is keyframing? Keyframing is setting points at different points of the timeline of a specific clip to do different things, to change a value from one thing to another uh, from the beginning to the end or in the middle or something like that. So it allows us to change things. So one simple example would be um, a simple zoom in or a zoom out or a pan left and right. And these are going to be very effective if we're doing stills and want to make a more dynamic timeline, you know, or more dynamic video than just throwing a still up. We can zoom in, zoom out, pan left, pan right, you know, the Ken Burns style of effects. And we would do that with keyframes. So I want to do a couple examples of doing some keyframing within the edit page here. We're going to do advanced keyframing in another video and do things on the color tab. So right now we're going to stick with the edit page. And so I've got this clip right here and well, in and of itself, it's not bad, but we can do some cool stuff with some keyframes to spice it up a little bit. So I'm going to do two different things. So first, I'm going to start off at the normal and then as it goes, I'm going to zoom in, which should make it look like it's going faster. Now we want to make sure that we have the inspector window open because these, this is where we're going to do everything. So you can be working with any clip. That's fine. And I've just got this particular clip here. Now what we want to do is we want to look at the inspector. If you don't have the inspector open, go ahead and open the inspector. And along this right hand side here, we have these little diamonds. If it's white, there's no keyframe. If it's red, there is a keyframe. So pretty simple. So I want to be on the first frame of this clip here, and I'm just going to click it to enable a keyframe. Now I'm going to go to the end of it and I'm going to adjust the zoom to 200%. Now, as soon as I do this, watch that diamond there. So I didn't have to select another keyframe. I didn't have to tell it I'm doing another keyframe since I already had a keyframe that we did at the beginning of the clip. Any change I do is going to create another keyframe. So something to keep in mind, I don't have to click on that every time. I just have to make my changes and then it will add a new keyframe there. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got going here now. So it does a zoom in while it's moving. So pretty basic. You know, but you could do other things with that. Now I'm going to change this up and I'm going to set it at two in the beginning and I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to change the end to one. This will give us the exact opposite effect. In fact, it will actually create kind of a dolly zoom effect. Not something you want to use all the time, but it can be kind of effective in creating a little mystery and, and or suspense in some types of shots. It's really not going to do much for this particular shot. It's just an example of something that we can do. So uh, let's play this back and see what we have. So even though I'm moving forward, I'm zooming back. So you have our some foreground pieces that don't seem to move, but the background is pushing back. So it's kind of an interesting effect. It's stretching out that lake a little bit. So kind of cool there. All right, now what else can we do? Well, anything that has a diamond next to it in the inspector, we can adjust. So now I'm gonna take this clip. I have one clip on top of another. So I have this foreground. And in this case, I'm gonna do a transition from one to another. And the way I'm gonna do that is Let's just kind of go about halfway in and then I'm going to set my zoom 
and my position. All right. And now I'm going to go to the end of the clip here. And we're going to zoom it way out. But I need, still need to kind of see it there. And we're going to move it all the way over to the side. All right. So now we have this. Uh, it should transition out by zooming down and down into the corner. Let's see how it works out. So you can use that to create your own types of transitions and different effects. So again, you can do all of this with any of the tools that are in here, the cropping tool, the transform tool, uh, compositing, uh, retiming, lens corrections, distortions, things like that. Now in another video, we're going to get into more advanced keyframing that we can do in, in other places. So another thing I want to show you here, I'm going to scroll some stuff down here on the bottom. All right, let's zoom in on here and you can see where I have different transform effects going on. So I can disable that or I can move the actual keyframes. I can add another keyframe as well. So if I add this keyframe and I move, I transform it to the right, it's actually going to do that. So you can do multiple things with keyframing. I'm going to, oops, can I get rid of that? So you can do it from the inspector or you can open up the, that little keyframe there once you've created one and do other little effects with it. So different things you can do with keyframing. So hopefully this will get you started in playing around and kind of getting used to the concepts of keyframes. Most of the keyframing stuff I do, I do it here in the edit tab. I don't do so much in the other tabs, but we are going to look at that because that's where we can change colors and do some other really cool effects in the, the color tab. So I want you to play around with doing this, playing with transforming and cropping and getting some keyframes done and see if you can come up with some pretty cool effects on your own. So not a very long video today, but it's going to help us introduce us to what keyframing is, get us some basic knowledge of keyframing, and then prepare us for some advanced keyframing that we're going to do later on. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video, smash down on that uh, thumbs up icon there, click on subscribe, and be sure and click the bell icon, otherwise you may not get notified every time I put out a new video, and I put out quite a few videos all the time, at least uh, two to three a week. So you want to make sure you get notified whenever a new video comes out. Again, thanks for watching, folks. I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.